So today I was going to talk about a YouTube video that I saw yesterday uh, by my buddy Cody Warner. He made a video about limitations and I had this whole thing that I was going to speak about limitations and then I turn on Instagram and I see a photo that a contractor put out for a set of steps on a client's house. I about passed out. So today I'm changing the subject. the outdoor living. So instead of fighting the industry or talking bad about what's going on, I decided maybe just put some tutorials about design and, and some of the, the ideas and the concept behind designs. Now, I don't want to get into the step thing because I really don't want to say the, the contractor's name. He actually does very great work. So to talk about him in that aspect, I'm really only saying about the sort of the design that what he did, but when it comes to his work and craftsmanship and customer service. But one thing that I do know when you do steps, you wanna try to design anywhere from one foot to 16 inches, so that's 12 inches or 16 inches on a set of steps. They're a lot more comfortable. You want to try to keep the steps in between six and seven inch rise, and you also don't want to change any variations of any of the steps or any anything as such. Also, you don't want to change the shapes or the size of the steps during the increment. So what I'm saying is, if you go down three set of steps, if you change any shapes or any size, put a landing, put a railing, put something, but you don't want the step sizes to change as you're moving up and down. And then you cannot have a, com and what the issue with this design is, it was a completely different design of a step on that bottom step, which creates a trip zone. Today, what I really want to concentrate on, especially on the first tutorial that I'll do, and I'll figure out how to butter this up and jazz it up, I want to talk about sort of the concept of design. I, I have a house that I've already drawn the design. I think I've already shown you guys the design, but I want to use some of the concept of this property. A house with a secluded um, backyard. It has like a sunroom and stuff that's there. And so it has, you know what I mean, some windows on, on one side, windows on the other side. And then the part of the yard is it has like a fence on the one corner and then there's like the neighbor's house, there's like some trees or stuff kind of blocking it. What I wanna talk about is how do you approach this style design? Uh, one thing about it is this area right here is sort of elevated. So what I did was because there are some trees and things like that on this area for the client, I put, they wanted an outdoor kitchen, a grill, so I, I sort of put like an outdoor kitchen area with a bar. And one thing you notice about these areas, there's two different heights for bars. So you have the first bar, which is 36 inches, that's your serving area. And then you have the back side where people are sitting, that's only 41, 42 inches. So I used a step down for the lower part of the bar. Then as you get to the outdoor living, one of the rules, actually I learned this from Nancy Hannig, landscape architect, uh, for plants, 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 up to the house. So one of the biggest mistakes that us hardscapes guys were doing, we would draw these paper patios and everything as close as we could to the house. And so what we've learned how to do is, is sort of separate uh, and put planting beds and things like that, some green space up close to the house to kind of separate that hard structure in the house and you can get some height, some elevation, some greenery, some plantings and things like that to give you a better look. Then you go into sort of the outdoor living space itself. So you already have this area where you have some tables and chairs, actually it's the bar, so you have chairs. There's a trellis style pergola going over the top and I do that for lighting so that way I can put some lights and stuff inside that area to shine down. The outdoor living over here is in this area. It's not huge at all, but it serves its purpose. It's, it's a lot of times you don't need to just throw a big, huge pavement out there in this area and I have a bunch of bricks or a bunch of concrete out there. You don't really need it. It's a household with only, I wanna say there's four uh, people in the house, husband, wife, and they have two children and they entertain. So the tables and chairs that I'm putting in here just for six seater, so mom, dad, and friends, and friends and family come over. 
I also added a seat wall in this corner so just in case they have more people coming over and things like that, they actually have somewhere to sit and hang out in the seat wall area. They requested a fire feature. So with this fence and wall from the neighbors, I was able to cut out a spot and put sort of a trailer style angle fire feature with a seat wall, you can put some furniture and things like that in this area. One thing you'll notice about this concept and design, it's only about 400 square feet total. And they actually had several other contractors come over. The first thing they did was just utilize the whole entire area and try to turn it into a paver patio and space like that. You don't need to do that. This is actually a lot cheaper than filling in a bunch of hardscapes everywhere. You can soften with some plantings, you put some lights in the walls and things like that. So more and more to the tutorials about designs and trying to get, you mean, the right concept. I'll try to do as many tutorials and things like that as I can. But one of the tips I wanna to say today is, you don't need to have paver or the pavement up against the house. Matter of fact, even if, it, especially for brand new houses, you wanna kinda of step yourself back at least six feet and put some planting, something to soften up. You sorta of want some height too. You don't wanna block the windows, but you want a little bit of height to kinda of separate the house hard structure to another hard structure. And there today is your outdoor living tip for today. Thanks for watching. We're elevating the outdoor living.